Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we are going to take a quick look at the YSL Holiday Quad, as well as the new Rouge Pure Couture lipsticks. So these were have recently been reformulated within the last few months. So I have three of the shades, and let's go ahead and start off with swatches of the quad. Now, I purchased the quad, this is number 910, uh, you know, actually when these first launched in the US, this was available. So I purchased it then. So it does not have the holiday actual like embossing or the special holiday packaging, but I'll put a picture of the holiday version up here so you can see what that looks like. And they have not brought this quad back in the permanent line yet. So I'm not sure what they're doing with that, but right now it's only available as a limited edition holiday palette. And you can see that this silver shade here is very smooth and creamy, very easy to go on, pretty opaque. The gold is more of a glitter shade. And you can see just from like the imprints in my palette that these are very soft, smooth shadows. Now this black, it's more of a matte black, but it has a little bit of sparkle in there. So the sparkle in here is gonna be more of like a white sparkle, like silverish white. And again, the gold sparkle would be gold sparkle. Uh, the silver is more metallic. And then we have a creamy matte. So these two mattes are different. The base on the black is gonna be a drier, more powdery matte in comparison with the soft pink, which is a creamy matte. Let's go ahead and move on to the demos and details for this quad. Now, I do have another video with this quad from when I first picked it up, and there are additional comparisons and everything in there, so I will leave that linked down below in the description box. This palette has four grams of product, it has a two-year shelf life, and it's made in Italy. As I mentioned, the shadows themselves are very smooth. They're very easy to use. They have more of a, you know, a dry powder cream kind of texture to them. They're very soft, so they imprint fairly easily. The glitter in the gold shade definitely can be a little bit messy. You kind of get a little bit of that, you know, kind of everywhere. It does have a little bit of a creamier texture, so it's not something that is so dry that you're gonna get a lot of fallout and kick up in the pan that spreads to the others, but you will get some. So just something to note there. Uh, that shade is definitely very, I mean, it's a glitter, so <laughs> you definitely have plenty of that. The shades themselves though, they perform very well with a brush or you can also use your fingers or the applicators that the palette comes with. But I think even with a, a brush, you're getting full pigmentation level essentially with these. So as for the color story itself, I have to say, you know, it's kind of a classic holiday kind of color story, uh, you know, kind of a glam smoky eye type thing. You've got the gold and the silver, I like being able to pair them, or you can definitely just do a sparkly, silvery, you know, uh, holiday look, smoky, silvery eye, and so forth. The matte pink, it kind of blends in with my skin tone, but I really like having that as a base there. It helps, you know, to put that on underneath the gold to help kind of adhere the glitter flakes. Again, if you're going to wear a lot of the gold, you might want to use a sticky primer on your eyes uh, to kind of make sure that they don't move around too much. But the other shades, there are no issues with that. As I mentioned, the black is matte, but there is some like silvery blue shimmer in there, you know, kind of a white, white, blue and silver. You can kind of see all of those shades in there when the light hits a certain way but you don't really notice too much of that on your eye unless you really build up the black a lot. So if you're gonna use the black as a base or you know, kind of sheer it out a little bit, you're really not gonna notice the sparkle effect on that. The black is a nice addition to add some depth to all of these colors and kind of help give them a little bit more dimension. So overall, I think the palette is a very nice palette. It's definitely soft and creamy, but we have had some other products that have come out with similar color stories, you know, some older ones and some newer ones. So let's take a look at some comparisons. I wanted to start with a couple things that are new and would not be in my previous video. So this one here is the Suku palette in number 130. You can see that the color stories here, while not the same, they definitely still kind of have a similar color story. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This first shade here is gonna be more of a champagne. 
and you can see that it is going to be uh you know a soft shimmery shade there it's definitely going to be deeper more brown than anything in the ysl then we have this shade here which is more of a blue gray so this is actually going to be more of a steel blue look at that you can see that is metallic just like the silver here but we have definitely much more intense blue in there and a deeper shade overall instead of the golden glitter we have a brighter yellow here and this yellow and the steel blue actually pair beautifully to make a really nice green and then last up we have a brown instead of the black so you can see overall although the color story is not going to be the same we definitely have you know a very similar tone overall and then this is the new Chanel Holiday uh, palette. I was gonna say quad, but this is our new Quint, the Lumiere Graphique. And again, this is definitely going to be different. We don't really have quite the same shades, but let's go ahead and see how this one compares as well. So first up, we have kind of this lighter um, beigey champagne and then more of a kind of like a, a burnished bronze and then we have a black now all of these shades have sparkle in them so this black is actually kind of similar to the ysl but you can see it is going to be it's a little bit more black so you have a little bit more opacity with that then we have a more it has a little bit more peach in it but more peachy champagne and then we have a white Okay, so instead of like a true silver, we have kind of this whitish silver shade. And this one's going to be a little bit less opaque than the others. So again, not the same, but you can get some similar looks from this palette. Keep in mind that everything in the Chanel, though, has shimmer, glitter in it. Whereas the YSL, we do have a solid creamy matte in the light pink. And then we have the matte with a little glitter in the black. And then this is the Chanel number no. five palette that came out for the Chanel number no. five anniversary not that long ago. So we have a sparkly gold. You can see it's pretty sheer. Then we have kind of this white satin with a little bit of gold in there. But the next shade is actually going to be more of a white gold. You can see that really has a golden glint to it, a bit more pigmented. And then we have a black and this black is going to be matte. Can see how those compare and just a little cameo sadie came in to say hello and you guys can see she's doing well so i'll have an update on her very soon but let me go put her where she belongs now let's move on to the rouge pure couture lipsticks and you can see that they have updated the packaging here so we've got ysl going along the two sides we have this gold cap now i picked up three of the shades and I do have to say that the, the colors run warmer in real life than they do in the promo photos. So you know, that's quite often the case. It's definitely the case with these. This is number one. And this one is called Beige Trench. So you can see that this is going to be a nude shade with some brown and some peach in it. I actually think this is a really great daily nude. Next, one of my lips is this one here. This is number three. And this one here you can see is going to be a bit more of a peach. This is Nude Decolleté. And this is pretty much more of a true soft peach. It's basically what it is. There's like no other nuances in there. And then we have number eight, Blouse New. And this one here is going to be a rosier shade. You can see though that it is going to be a warm rose. So these are the three shades I picked up. Let's go ahead and move on to the lip swatches so you can see these. Now, as for the details, we have 3.8 grams of product in here. And these have a two year shelf life and they're made in France. So the eyeshadow was made in Italy. The lipsticks are made in France. As for the texture of these, these do not seem to be that different from the previous formulation. So these feel like they have perhaps a little bit more oil in them. 
Uh, they remind me a little bit more of the Rouge Volupte Shine lipsticks in that sense, just because there does seem to be a little bit more glide with these. So you can get some feathering with these over time. Actually, I would have to say the wear time on these is pretty impressive considering how much slip and glide there is on these when we have a satin finish. So you can see I have a wear test here showing you like five hours, you can still see that. And that's with shade number eight, by the way. And yeah, overall though, I would have to say the comfort level is pretty comparable to the previous version. Um, you know, aside from just a tiny bit more slip, I would say the formulas feel very, very similar on the lips. So if you like the last formula, you'd probably like this one as well. However, if you do have an issue with feathering and bleeding and so forth with fine lines around your lips, I would definitely recommend using a lip pencil as a barrier here. Now, we don't have a lot of comparisons, but I did wanna show you guys this one. This was my favorite of, these were the uh, Zoe Kravitz and YSL collaboration lipsticks that came out a long time ago. This is the last one that I have still. This is shade 121. And I just wanted to show you this one because it was one of my favorites. Her collection tends to have some like cooler tones in there. She's got some warmer shades and some cooler tones. And they did like two different collaborations. You can still sometimes find these around, but this shade 121, it really has a nice purpley glint to it. So I really like that one. And this one here is just Tom Ford Sugar Glider. I just wanted to show you how those compare there because they are not the same but they are a pretty close dupe. I know a lot of people have been looking for it. Unfortunately, this YSL one is hard to find as well, but you know, at least it's another option there. Just a couple more comparisons. This one here is Merit in Baby, and I wanted to see how this one compares. These don't have quite as much slide as the YSL, but they do feel pretty comfortable on the lips. You can see this is gonna be a little bit of a pinker version here from Beige Trench. And speaking of slip, here is the shade slip from Merit. You can see this is gonna be a light brown shade. And let me just swatch that one a little bit better. And these are gonna be a little bit more sheer. The YSL are going to be more pigmented with one swipe compared to the Merit. And you can see that this shade slip has a bit more yellow in it. It's gonna be a warmer tone. And last up, this is Merit in Millennial. I went to see how that one compared to number eight, Bluffs New. And you can see that Millennial is going to be a cooler tone pink. Again, it's gonna be a lighter shade as well. And this is the Armani Lip Power in 106. Let's go ahead and put this one up here. And we have a similar sheen on the lips with this formula, but it is going to, again, have a little bit less oil content. It's more of a creamy formula versus a, an oily formula. And you can see that 106 is not gonna be the same. We've got a little bit more of that peachy pink in number three from YSL, but they are pretty close. And this one here is the Lip Power in 503. Uh, that is definitely gonna be more peachy, um, definitely more peachy pink, a bit deeper. I was thinking that it might be close to number eight and it is definitely closer to eight than one or three, but not quite there. And let's just check out two more lip powers. This one here is 104. And let's see, we're gonna put this one right up here. It is gonna be lighter, more milkier. It is a very soft peach, but it's definitely gonna be a lot lighter in color than the number three from YSL. And then we have 113. Let's just put 113 here. And this one here has a bit more uh, blue in it, a little bit more purple but it's gonna be a rosy shade. So uh, let me just swatch it right here by number eight as well. So you can see how that compares. And you can see it is gonna be a cooler version. So I hope this has been helpful. Overall, I'd have to say that the YSL palette is a nice option, but these colors themselves are not unique. You probably have something similar in another palette or a couple palettes, but I do think it's a nice formula and it's a nice color story. I do hope that they bring it back in the permanent, 
you know, collection as well, but it is very nice for the holidays. Now, as for the new lipsticks, their new formulation, I think it's a really nice formula. It's comfortable on the lips. It's not drying. It does leave kind of a stain on your lips. So you get quite a bit of longevity out of this and for a satin finish, I think that is pretty impressive, especially considering, you know, that these have a little bit more, you know, of an oily texture to them in comparison. And I'm not saying oily in a bad way, more of those like hydrating oils. So they are very comfortable on the lips, but it also gives you a bit more slip with this. So just some things to note. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what you think of these products and I'll see you very soon. Have a great day.